everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. It can be hard to choose colors that work together for card projects. I tend to keep things really simple, but every now and then I wanna break out of the mold and do something unexpected. Enter the color wheel. The color wheel is a great resource for any crafter. It can really help you choose colors that work together. I've done a video in the past that touches on color and I will link to that, but I wanna start doing a little more with the color wheel and applying it to cards going forward. My color wheel combo card, <laughs> say that four times fast, is coming up next. Works on a hot summer day too. So here's what I'm going to work with today. Let's talk about the color wheel. And any color wheel will work. I, I will have the one that I'm using today linked below. But what I wanted to do here is talk about different color schemes. And I'm gonna turn this in hopefully to a series. Today I wanna to talk about triadic color schemes. What a triadic color scheme is, this little guy here, see that triangle? These are colors that sit equidistant from each other on a color wheel in a triangular relationship. They also will work together on any project, right? They have a beautiful sort of, well, it's, I can't use the word complementary because that's not really what it is, but they have a triadic relationship for high contrast. And for example, the three primary colors that we know about are red, yellow, and <laughs> red, yellow, and blue. You know, that is a classic color scheme in the triad. But what I wanted to do today, I started with this color. This is a Simon Says Stamp Melon, okay? So I went into my oranges and yellow orange, and I'm actually going more into the yellow orange for this. And then when I go into this wheel and I go across, I've got a red violet, right? That's gonna be Simon Says Stamp Magnolia. And then my blue is going to be a blue green and I'm going to use the color scuba. And actually I should show you the magnolia too. Now this is just one way to use a color wheel to start out with some colors that you like. I'm also gonna use black ink with this set. Now this is called organic fruits. I have not made anything with this yet, but what I have seen, I have loved the way people are using this and layering in you know, different colors and the overlap and the offset. I love the offset stamp possibilities. So that's what we're going to do with this. And I might even use the scuba color as my greenery. So that could be interesting. But either way, let's get started with some stamping so I can show you how this triadic scheme works. So I'm gonna use a creative corner today. I hardly ever use these, but I do need this today because what I'm designing here is a single panel, right? I'm gonna have an orange here, and I think I'll have maybe a pear here, and I'll have one more piece of fruit down here. I don't even know, is that an apple, an orange? <laughs> it's hard to say. I'm gonna start here, and I'm actually gonna get both of these out, because I wanna make sure, I am gonna trim this down a little. I wanna make sure that I am lining this up properly in this piece of fruit. So how about if we do this? Actually, no, you gotta, you gotta have it be in the stamp side. Okay, like that, oop. <laughs> I am a highly trained professional fruit, ma fruit wrangler. Okay, I think that'll work for my first color. So here's what we're gonna do, right? And I'm sure the paper will shift. I am going to pick that up. Maybe I don't need this because I'm gonna trim it down. Huh, you know what? I'm taking the corner out because I'm not. I'm going to trim this down. All right, let's uh, let's just pop our fruit shadow there. Okay, pick it up. You always you got to change. You know, you can change. And because I decided here on the fly that I was just gonna, you know, oh, let's get those bubbles out. You know how that is with the bubbles. Bubbles out. Right. Lift it. Press. Get them all out. I'm gonna ink this up really well. I'm gonna bring this down and I'm gonna stamp. Just like that, okay? Let's do that again. Bring that down like that. Now I'll go ahead and clean this stamp off. Like that. And then I'll pick this little fruitastic outline up. And how do I wanna do this? I do want it to be a little offset, okay? 
And that's, that's what I love about this type of thing. Like if you're gonna use the dies, which I'm not going to today, you know, you're gonna wanna have things lined up differently, but this is just, oh, well, I think this will be fine. Simon Intense Black. Let's stamp that down, pushed in the corner. All right, nice. Okay. And stamp it down one more time. Get a nice bit of black there. Okay. Color number one, done. I'm going to do a pair. Okay. Cover you up here for a second. Like that. And because I want to do the black over the pair, I think for the pair, is that what I want to do? Do I want to have it be a little bit like that? Or like that? Does it go on? Well, I guess we do want it to be on this side. So I think what I'll do, pop that right there for now. Pick up the stamp. Like that. Pick it up. Push it down to get the bubbles out. I'm going to take the Magnolia for this color. Okay. Oh, that is a juicy path. Look at that. I love it. What a great color. Mmm. Beautiful. Pick it up. And then I'm going to stamp that down again. Oh, this color is so gorgeous. Okay. And that will be plenty on the pair. Now, here's another fun thing. Um, are pairs this color? No, but that's the beauty about stamping, right? When we are creating... Hyperrealism, well, I don't know if it's hyperrealism, um, but it's fun, right, to do things that don't really, you know, that don't really happen in nature. Mm-hmm. Oh, I should wipe that off a little bit better over here. And I think this is going to be fine. The bubbles don't matter on this because we are just stamping black. I'm repositioning though, right? You see that? Okay. Now bring it down stamp and bring this down again offset is totally fine right we're just we're just playing with it we're just having some fun we're having a play I want to make sure that when I place it right that it's going to be just about what I want and leave room for the greeting okay I'm going to leave room for a greeting here and you'll see that soon oh, look I still have have to give that a have to give that a lick and a promise. Let's make sure we get the bubbles out here. Okay, and we're bringing in the third color, which is scuba. And you know what? I'm just going to do the fruit. I'm not doing. Oh, look at that color! It's so good. And also, you know, if a dye ink stains your stamp, oh, I missed a little spot there. Don't sweat it. It's it's no big deal, right? It is literally just the fact that. You have, I'm gonna lift this up and just press down again. It's because you have a high quality photopolymer. They are meant to get stained and it will not affect your future stampings, right? You just clean them off and they are good to go. Okay, now stamping you down. Yeah, that's a little better in there. Again, I feel that with an offset style, it's okay, right? You're totally golden to do this. Okay. Now that one has more of a fullness to it, and that's totally fine. And we'll stamp this down in black. So now, look at this color scheme. Like, this is not something that I would ever come up with on my own. Like, you know, this is not... <laughs> I tend to go really conservative with color, right? But look at that. Isn't that kind of fun? And I'll use, I'll use my Misty for this, because... Yeah, why not? I got it. Got it out. So we'll do a little fruit dot here. Fruit dots. Okay. Nice inky black. Fits perfectly in here. Oh, so cute. I do love, I love graphic sets, right? I think they're fun. And fruit can go for a lot of things, right? Fruit, fruit much like insects. Yeah, they, they, they can they can speak to a lot of occasions. All right. And let's do one more piece of fruit here. Because I think I am going to cut with this bleeding off a little. And we will, well, I'll show you that in a second. But I'm not going to stamp on 
the greeting yet because I'm just not sure. Oh, well, let's get that. That's easier. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. Am I going to stamp in black ink or am I going to emboss? And honestly, I feel like if I stamped in black ink for the greeting, that's probably going to be better. So you know what? We're going to, we're going to stamp the other pieces on but first. I'm going to grab my die cut machine and I'm going to cut my panel down. I've taken one of my A2 layers dies and I've got it set up with the crop that I want. I'm going to cut off a little bit of the pear. I'm going to cut off a little bit of the apple. And I think that looks cool with them bleeding off. And uh, the term bleed, if you don't, if you're not familiar with it, it just means to extend all the way to the edge of something and beyond. Well, we won't see the beyond, right? So we're just going to go ahead and cut this out. A lot of times I use my Gemini Junior when I'm not filming because it's so easy on the wrists, although this wasn't hard. But I like to include my spell binders when I'm just doing simple little cuts. And actually, did I just get... Oh, no, we're fine. Okay. Sometimes when your plates get dirty, they will transfer stuff to your uh, panel. And that is... Well, that's the worst. All right. There is the crop. So now I need to decide about my greeting. I'm going to do a thank you. Right, because the thank you is good. And I just decided, you know what? We are just going to do this in black ink. I think sometimes, do you ever find yourself overthinking? Um, I overthink things, and I don't think we need to. Now, I want to save some room here for this guy. I don't think, well, you know, I could do little black leaves. You know what? I actually might. But here's what we're going to do first. I'm going to try to get that lined up like that right in the right in the little guy get in there now right center <laughs> it's everything sticking to me and then have the thank you in here so this is so simple and i do think sometimes we overthink we overthink our designs now i feel like when you're going all in with some kind of color scheme now let's see is that does that look even i think it's good enough you know then you then sometimes if you try to do too much then you're going to overwhelm the design and here you've already got really really fun color going on so just keep your greeting simple and if you don't emboss right then you don't have to deal with any warping panels so i'm just going to ink this up and again this is such a nice all-purpose black ink if you're looking for a good one one of the reasons i love it is you can color with it with copic markers as well the simon intense black so let's bring that down and stamp. Look how cute that is. I think that turned out great. I'm going to hit it one more time just to get nice inky coverage on both. And then I'm going to add stems and leaves. I think I'm going to add stems and leaves. Why not? Okay, pressing it up that. Uh, I think it should have been fat, fat side down. Should be side down. Okay. Oh, I see there is a little mark there. Good thing I'm stamping right over it. Oh, that looks great. Okay. I don't even need to stamp. Well, if you stamped one twice, you should probably stamp both like that. And then let's try to clean this a little bit better, but also let it dry. One of the things you have to be careful with with a stamp when you're wiping it down with your stamp chamois or a cloth is that it's not wet because I have done that one too many times where all of a sudden, you know, I've got this wet, um, a wet piece that I just did not intend to have. Okay, I am going to pop this right here. Let go. Yeah, that'll be fine. It's going to bleed, right? It's going to be right off the edge, but that's totally fine. When things bleed, they create um, a sense of, well, let me get that in there, a sense of size and grandeur. I think that's fine. I don't think I need to stamp that one twice. Okay. They, they create this feeling that your card is bigger and, well, it's just a, it's just a graphic technique. All right. Now, should we do a few leaves? Maybe not on the top. What if I did, let's see, here's what's kind of fun. I don't, I don't know if I want to do solid leaves, but I could do little outlined leaves. How about that? How about just an outlined leaf for each one? 
just a way again to bring in a little graphic interest for that outline but I am not going to color it because I just want this to stand on its own oh that's so fun how fun is that I didn't even know that was going to work that totally works all right we're going to also do that with our pear cute mm. See that little, little residue transfer? It's totally fine. It's gonna be fine. Got a little on my, got a little on the misty door there, but it will all clean off. All right, sometimes I just don't have the, the bandwidth to pull in my stamp presser. <laughs> okay, wiping it down. Now, if this was down a little, that, that could have worked, right? But you know, it's fine, totally fine because it just gives a little a little texture there. And honestly, sometimes you don't know, right, when you're designing a card, especially if you have no, you know, practical example that you did or or whatever. This is this is truly designing on the fly. All right. But that is a super fun panel with colors that work together. So, for my card base, I'm keeping it clean and simple, right? I don't want to detract from the wonderful color combo that I've created. You know, and that's really a personal preference. For me, whenever I pick something that's bold and, you know, maybe not a traditional color combo that I would use, I'm going to go on a white card base or a craft card base, or maybe even a black card base would have been nice for this, but that's my card base. Now, I'm gonna take my panel which I have already put some foam tape on the back. Did that off camera, right? I think my ink is nice and dry. Oh, <laughs> there I am with my opes. How many of you out there say ope? Uh, I learned it from living in Minnesota, and now I say it more than my Minnesotan husband, but I digress. Let's just line this up. I'm gonna stand up here over the card base. Just like to visualize all the sides before I press. Just like that. And that is the finished card project. I'm not gonna put anything else on it. I could grab any number of envelopes. In fact, let me grab one. You could take any one of those colors for your envelope. Isn't that pretty, right? Just pick up one of them. But these colors, again, based on our selection from the color wheel with our yellow orange, our red violet and well i guess this is less teal than i thought it was going to be but again i know the general area here and that's how come i know they work together so i hope this is helpful and i challenge you you know if you if you have a color wheel or you you get a color wheel you can actually download a color wheel for free as well like there are many printable color wheels you don't have to have you know a physical one but it can definitely help you when you are choosing colors and kind of busting out of your mold. So I hope this was helpful. Again, super simple example, but I'm gonna be tackling more ideas with the color wheel and how to choose colors going forward here on my channel. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.